So iOS 16.1 beta 5, and then also iPadOS 16.0 beta 12, or iPadOS 16.1 beta 6, basically all that released today to developers to test out and to try out, but I will say we are getting much, much closer to the official release, which should be the week of October 24th if everything is adding up correctly for both iOS 16.1 and we will be finally getting iPadOS 16.1 when it does release in late October. Now for right now, if this beta is any indication of what's to expect, do not expect to have secondary monitor support when 16.1 finally releases on the iPad Pro or any stage manager enabled iPad that should have secondary monitor support. But in this video, let's see exactly what's new with it if we did find anything new. But like I said, we are getting closer to that RC edition and that final release candidate. So the changes are gonna be much more on the back end with performance improvements, bug fixes, and that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's talk about these new beta updates for both iOS and iPadOS. So let's get right into this video, everybody. Here I have the update in terms of size and how big iOS 16.1 developer beta 5 was. So you can see it was about 5.15 gigs. So give yourself at least 10 gigs of open storage to get this installed. And it is a little bit strange that these updates are so big because normally when it comes to beta updates, normally the first beta is the largest one. And then as you get further along in the beta development, it gets much smaller, much less than a gigabyte of space. But if you go over to iPadOS 16 developer beta 12, which is what we have installed right here on this M1 iPad Pro, as you can see, it was only actually 264.2 megabytes. So again, a little bit different in terms of the size, but again, there isn't much new on either of them, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So next up, let's go to the build number and see exactly what we're dealing with from a build number perspective. So let's go to general, let's go to about, let's go on 16.1. So we have 16.120B50. 2B. So that is what we have on iOS 16.1. So we're getting closer and closer to the RC edition. Ideally, it should come out the week of October 24th. So give it about two more weeks before 16.1 comes out to the entire public. And I'm going to show you what it looks like on iPad. So if I go into the settings for the iPad, we go into the about section and then we go into 16, which you can see right here, it's actually showing 16.1. So it's kind of weird the way they're naming and they're running the naming moniker for iPadOS because you saw we're on iPadOS 16 beta 12, but then internally it is iPadOS 16.1 because that's gonna be the first release for iPad. So in terms of what's new, there really isn't much new on this iPadOS and iOS update. So the first thing that we do notice is the outline on the dynamic island, which you guys can see right there. Hopefully, if I can get it focused correctly, you might be able to see that there is a little outline on the dynamic island, but that only happens when you're using a dark wallpaper. So if I go into Spotify, press play on a song, and then I go up, you can see that there's an outline around the dynamic island when it's in use, when there's a black background. But the moment you go into a bright wallpaper and background, it's gonna go back to the normal dynamic island. So I don't know if that's a glitch or if that's on purpose, but it's still here one beta later. The next thing I will mention is that haptic feedback on the keyboard is a little bit less intense. So the number one thing I've been telling people to do when they do get the new update on 16.0 is to go into your actual sound and haptics, scroll down to keyboard feedback, and you actually have the ability to turn on haptics, which I really, really like when typing on the keyboard, on the virtual keyboard especially, because it gives you some tactile feedback. But with 16.1 beta 5, it actually reduced the amount of feedback you get in terms of how powerful that haptic feedback is to each their own. Some people like it, some people don't, but it's there as for you guys to notice. And then the only real difference that we notice is if you go into shortcuts, so let's go into shortcuts and see exactly what I'm dealing with. So if I go into short, and if you go into the three dots on one of your shortcuts, or if you create a shortcut from scratch and you go to choose icon, it's actually now categorized. So all these glyph icons are now categorized. Before it wasn't, so it's a little bit easier now for you to decide what icon and what glyph you wanna put on an icon on your home screen. You know, to each their own, so if I wanna put this little house right here and then press add to home screen, you can see that it's a little house right there for that glyph icon, which I'm not gonna do right now. But that's pretty much the only difference that we saw with iOS 16.1 beta 5. And then I do wanna show you guys what battery life is looking like on both of these devices. So this is the 13 Pro Max, this is the 14 Pro Max, and the reason I'm showing both of them is because A, they're both on the beta program, so they're both running 16.1 beta 5, but I'm also using them both simultaneously, so I wanna make sure that I'm showing you guys true numbers in terms of what the battery looks like, because some days I'm using this one more than I use this one, and vice versa. So if we go over the last 10 days, you can see that on 16.1, we're getting about nine hours of screen on time on the 13 Pro Max, 
and then down here we're getting about 47 minutes but again the 14 pro max isn't being used as much currently so you, this one is a better indication of what the beta program is looking like on an iphone this is the 13 pro max like i mentioned so eight hours so about nine hours of screen on time is pretty intense so here we have a day where we did 12 hours and 20 minutes another day with 10 hours and eight minutes and so far from a charge perspective it's barely going over 100 on those days so in a day like this we got 12 hours and 20 minutes but we used about 120 percent battery so on a day where we use up less than 100 percent we got about eight hours so on a full charge i think you get about eight to ten hours of battery life but i will say that i took this on a trip the other day and it did not last me the whole day the way that the 13 pro max would last me so i don't know what's going on with the battery life but that's something that i did want to bring to everybody's attention but then when it comes to performance, everything's working very, very smoothly. Multitasking works. The phone isn't getting hot anymore, which I do like to see. I am testing out the 14 Plus right now, which so far has been the battery champ, which we'll have a review on that later on. But from a performance standpoint, everything works as advertised. AirDrop is working. Multitasking is working. Safari is working. You know, 4K video is working, as you guys saw with the 4K cinematic video in the intro of this video. But overall, I am enjoying it. But not too much new when it comes to the, this beta update specifically. So let's get out of this view and finish up this video. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many changes, if at all. The only real tangible change is that we got some categories for the glyph icons inside of shortcuts, which again, is a very niche update, nothing too crazy. But overall, it's just stability improvements. So I will say that even though iPadOS 16.1 you know, isn't going to be this huge game changer that we all wanted it to be. Again, we don't, we're not getting secondary monitor support, but we are getting Stage Manager on multiple iPads now. So you no longer need just an M1 iPad. It now works with an A12X and an A12Z, which is the 2018 and the 2020 iPad Pros respectively. I've had zero issues, zero hiccups on any of these betas since they stopped using secondary monitor support. So if you are somebody that wants to try out Stage Manager and you haven't gone into the betas yet, I would say go for it. You know, we're close enough to the regular release where it's not a big deal. And it is extremely stable if you stay on the iPad itself. Because again, once you go to secondary monitor support, even though it's no longer there, that's where all the bug issues started to happen. And that's why I'm assuming Apple got rid of that feature for now. But that is pretty much it for these beta updates. Like I said, we're getting closer and closer to the final release, which should be the week of October 24th. So mark your calendars and get your iPhones and iPads ready for that. But if you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And leave some comments down below. Are you guys excited for 16.1? What is your favorite feature that will be coming out with 16.1? Because there are a few that are gonna be coming like the Matter Accessories, like the Shared Library, like Stage Manager for multiple iPads. So let me know in the comments down below. Always curious to know. But if you guys want to watch some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, and even macOS, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.